for the ad person, just that in English, and that will really be helpful for the folks who are running campaigns, who are, who are part of departments, instead of like fleeing the website and then calling me up and saying, Joaquin, I don't know what to do. They'll be like, okay, I have, I can see this, and I can read, okay, this is how much a one-fourth page ad costs for, you know, five weeks, or, you know, this is who I call for a PSA on, on um, broadcast, or this is how much a spot's gonna cost over the air. Like, they have that information. It's the, you know, it's that kind of, uh, 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 like a harm reduction. Having that little English thing there for the folks who are doing the advice, I think, is really key. Yeah, thank you. What can be pitched to ethnic media? Op-ed articles, uh, Mohamud? I think everything, you can be pitched to every other news media. You can do to our media, too. Uh, except, you know, few articles, uh, you think of uh, language, culture, uh, but also, you know, anything that relates to the other people we live with in the city, we are also interested to know. We watch the local news, but though, you know, we watch, and then also we need to have our, our own uh, and a media and uh, read those and, and uh, you know, get the news through that media. So anything, uh, employment, jobs, housing, uh, family issues, uh, anything. Martha? Uh, I say that um, though I understand Chris's point about the press releases and buy to, uh, so press releases are crucial to our communities. So the Google translation doesn't work, but worse yet, the message doesn't translate either. So I go back to the meals because for, uh, for me it was shocking that the, 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 the kids that get the less amount of food in summers are Hispanics, though we are the, the growing area in the school system, is because they just say uh, free meals but nobody explains certain things on that press release to us, the editors, or my team at the editors, which is uh, you don't have to show papers. You just have to walk in and your kid will be fed. Uh, well, most of our Hispanic families will not go because they think they're going to be asked papers. And even if you're legal, I am legal and I even have a hesitation on showing my papers because I have been in that track, on the track of not having had papers in my life. So um, it's the press releases that you do also have to be cultural sensitive to our community. Uh, so don't believe that we don't want your press releases. Yes, we do. Please make sure you get the, the tool, extra budget for that. But make sure that that press release is cultural sensitive to our community. And I have been pushing the governor, the also the mayor's office, when they <laughs> send the press releases, and like, can you give us a translation? And thank God for Joaquin, he understands the culture. And, I, <laughs> and they translate, but they understand what we're trying to convey to our community, and guess what, it's, take, it's taking track. Our Facebook, our social media is picking up every time that we're bringing things from the mayor's office because they're starting to understand that it's the message, not just the translation of the message, of the speech that you do like, like this week. It's what is important for the community. Uh, when, the, when the governor went to uh, China or he traveled overseas, the, 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 the message was he's bringing jobs back to the community. So he can travel to the whole world, but the job was the issue in our community. We'll get more jobs for ourselves. Thank you. Now, we've touched upon this before, the disparity between these ad budgets and the tiny bit that uh, ethnic group gets. But how can marketers and communicators fold in ethnic media into larger, already in the works, general market campaigns? Is there a way to... Chris? <laughs> if you... Uh, I've worked with a number of clients on trying to include um, ethnic media into their overall ad buy, and a lot of times it's after, you know, the, the budget's already been set, but, you know, a lot of times, you know, cutting down some of the, uh, for instance, some of the ad space that you have uh, in, let's say, for instance, you have something, a, a full page ad in the, in the Seattle Times. Well, you can ch take that down to a junior page and probably have enough money left over to to spread around through multiple uh, ethnic media companies over here. If you're doing a radio buy, you know, and you cut down a little bit of the frequency that you're doing on the radio buy, and you know, it might not be, it might take, you know, one, two, maybe five spots per week. That depends on the buy that you can reallocate those funds. I mean, on the other side of the of, of the of the ship, you know, if you've got a junior page, half page, full page in, in the Seattle Times, people are still going to see it if they pick the paper up. But that's a different story. 
Um, uh, but you know, you're still going to command the page, and I think um, as long as you're commanding the page with your advertisements, and you can you can take those down a little bit and then reallocate some of those uh, resources to some of the ethnic uh, media outlets, it, it's a pretty simple thing to do. It just takes somebody who number one has the ability, has the authority, has, a lot of times has the courage to do it and say, you know what, we're going to put a junior page over here or a half page uh, over here instead of having a, a full page and we're going to take some of these other resources and, and spread this campaign to some of the other ethnic media outlets with the same money that you're doing to increase your, your outreach and your uh, penetration into the market. And I think that's one of the um, easiest ways uh, that, that it can be done. You know, sometimes uh, when you're kind of locked into a contract, people might say, well, contractually we can't do X, Y, and Z, but you know, you can always go back and renegotiate some issues with you in the contract. And a lot of times the person you're advertising with uh, will probably accommodate it as well. So, you know. Be bold. Be bold. Very bold. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. Yeah, um, I think this goes back to, you know, integration and starting from the beginning. I think that designing the, the media buy is probably one of the last things that you want to do, and it should be the result of integrating cultural competency into your camp campaign from the beginning. Um, so I think that there are a lot of nonprofit community organizations or government agencies in the room, is my suspicion, right? You raise your hand. Yeah? Okay. Um, and so when you're thinking about, you know, when you're doing your focus groups, are people of color and local communities integrated into those focus groups? Are you getting information from them that saying, this is not really what I care about, but this is what I care about. Can you cleave into what they care about and, and make that the real campaign? Then you have a relevant campaign that you can take to a media buy that is more relevant. And also think about how you describe your organization, you know, going back to brand equity. If you don't have a lot of brand equity with a, with a community, organization, with a community um, how are you describing yourself for the first time? And is that community going to really get it? You know, if you are a nonprofit, you go to somebody and say, hey, we're a nonprofit in the English language mainstream audience. Like, oh, that means you're, you're working for a cause. I'm going to give you a gold star. I, told, I used to work at a nonprofit. I told my mom I worked for a nonprofit. She thought I made no money. She was like, oh, Sayan doesn't have a salary. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. You know, so just like when, you, when you're thinking about reaching out to diverse communities, think about like how they're actually going to perceive your organization if they've never heard of you before. And, you know, think about how to communicate in a different way. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in on that one? Martha? I'm going to give one tool for you guys that is a tough one and it's going to take you a year or two to, to get engaged with. But internally, you have to involve your government relations person. If it's a corporation, if it's your, the CEO, because what has happened and will happen and will keep going forever is that many things the corporations will require at one time in Olympia. And they will come back to our communities to say, have we served you? And we will say, well, I think so, like two, three years ago you put an ad or two, three years ago you did something, but it's not an ongoing relationship. And I learned this 20 years ago from the attorney from uh, Cesar Chavez, believe it or not. It's the government relations who at one time is going to come down to our communities to ask for help. And they have bypassed you all. And then they want us to go back up and up the stream and it's much harder. And I say that because, like I said, we're in the middle of something going on that is the, this is the fourth one on my, on my watch, and it's happening again. Why did you bypass us all these years, and now you want us to help you out here? When you could have just spent, I don't know, a billion of 800 billion on our community, and it would have made the difference. So start talking, the ad agencies, start engaging the government relations of the client that you have, and if it's a smaller company, the CEO of that company, I have, I know several corporations in, in, in Washington State that are very managed by the CEO, but when the legislation comes on them, it's the CEO who has to show up themselves in Olympia. So do that. It's, it's a task that it took me 20 years to hand on, but it's, it's paying off. So, so that's my tool for all of you guys to look into. Okay, thank you. Now we have a number of questions that you wrote down for us and we're going to turn it over to that portion so we can get your questions in as well. This is Roz. 
First question, can you offer examples of the wrong way to engage with ethnic media? Some <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, sombreros, or the, uh, the Taco Bell, yo quiero Taco Bell. Yeah, like, oh God, you know, no, not all Mexicans are chihuahuas and we don't all own chihuahuas. <laughs> Yes, uh, I remember when I lived in Tucson, I grew up in Tucson, well, we had a, a Hispanic, um, it was um, media concerned professionals, and we're, we were instrumental in making sure that uh, at that time, gosh, I don't even remember what year it was, that um, broadcasters did not say illegal on the news, they changed it to undocumented. Where it got lost, I don't know. But um, yeah, there's a lot of, um, I lost my train of thought, shoot. <laughs> uh, what is the wrong way to it? Wrong way, sorry, sorry. But yeah, there, you know, the, the, the lazy Mexican, you know, leaning up against the, the cactus and with the sombrero, we got rid of that, we got rid of the um, frito bandito, because no, we're not all bandidos, you know. And um, it's just really important to, to talk with us. And I think it's great that you guys argue over one word, because that's, that's how we, you know, we make sure it's, to me, it's respect. It's yeah, respect right. in the community. And you know, like you see these big, huge campaigns. This is an example, you've probably all heard it, but for those who haven't, you know, an example of something that didn't work. Got Milk. That was a great campaign in English. Great campaign. But you know what it means when you say, Tienes leche en español? Are you lactating? Are you lactating?